Flip over your running shoes and you'll see a very typical pattern of wear from the heel all the way to the toe. Shoes are built stronger in these areas to deal with that so you're not having to buy a new pair every couple of weeks. And your skeleton does the same thing. When you run, stress starts on the lateral aspect of the femur, goes medially, traveling down the entire leg, finally ending at your toes. These regions of your skeleton are stronger and denser because they have to deal with more stress. This is also where you see bone stress injuries. I expect to see bone stress injuries in a few specific areas. The medial tibia, the distal aspect of the second through fourth metatarsal, the medial femoral neck, the medial femoral shaft, zone one of the sacrum, the distal fibula, and the posterior calcaneus. These areas deal with large amounts of stress. When a runner is diagnosed with a bone stress injury that isn't in one of these locations, two questions come to mind. First, is there an underlying health issue? Why is a different part of a bone breaking down than the ones under the highest loads? The second question is, has there been a big change in their training environment? Specifically, I want to know if they've had some big change in terrain, like going from roads to only running on trails. Have they been trying to adopt some new running mechanic that's loading their body differently than they're used to? Or have they been spending a large percentage of time running in carbon plated footwear? Because there's been a couple studies that have potentially linked bone stress injuries in the feet to the use of super shoes. Running related injuries hit very specific areas. When a runner develops an injury in a different location, we wanna make sure that it's actually a running related injury and that there isn't some underlying thing going on that we've missed. Thinking Cap Thursday.